Coming up on Cedar Valley Today, we have a look at Bremer County's rich history. A Warburg personal trainer changes lives. And Warburg men's basketball is headed to the Sweet 16. This is Cedar Valley Today. Hello and welcome to Cedar Valley Today. I'm Tyler French. And I'm Tyler Metcalf. Waverly and the rest of Bremer County have a rich history. One Waverly organization and its volunteers have been working since the 1950s to preserve that history for everyone to see. Cedar Valley Today's Olivia Jansen has more. The Bremer County Historical Society Museum is filled with three floors of history, all organized by rooms. The Veterans Room features uniforms from Bremer County military men and women. The school room holds old school items like desks and books, and the log cabin room looks just like a log cabin would have back in the 1800s. Museum co-curator Jan Heineman said the museum was started back in the 50s when women and the daughters of the American Revolution group realized pieces of history were being thrown away. They started off with a few displays in the basement of the courthouse, and in 1961, the museum started in its current location on Bremer Avenue in Waverly. We want to preserve the early history of Bremer County, which goes back to 1850s and even earlier. Heinemann said a lot of people who visit the museum are tourists or school classes. People from the community also visit. Warburg student Ashley Sanders was one of those community members. My mom and I were curious about it. We've lived here pretty much our entire lives, and so we hadn't come in before. So one day, a couple years ago, we came in and just really loved it. Sanders also went to the museum as a requirement for her public history course. She enjoyed both visits so much that she decided to become a volunteer. I just wanted to get some experience in museum work since that's what I'm headed towards with my history major. If there's people coming by, I do tours, things like that and there's a lot of dusting, cleaning that goes on here. With so many different kinds of people coming to the area, Heinemann said it's important to know the history of where you're living. Well, it's good to know what our roots are, what, where, how this area came to be and, and why. And the museum has so many things to see, Heinemann said a lot of people come back more than once. And she's more than happy to share the history of her county with others. The game is currently closed for the season, but it will open again on May 3rd, 2017. To schedule a tour, you can call or email the museum. Reporting for Cedar Valley Today, I'm Olivia Jansen. It certainly is interesting seeing the seed that Bremer County has influenced people with its rich history. The man you've probably seen in the W with a big smile on his face, Romeo Jumesi, is an impactful person in the Waverly community. I had the chance to talk to Romeo about what he does. Romeo Jumesi is a person you should know. As the director of personal training and group fitness at the W, Romeo has an impact in this community. The man with the constant positive attitude loves what he does. The reason why I'm so passionate about what I do is because I love seeing people moving from point A to point B. I love making a difference into people's life. Romeo has been working with a W member, Susan Vallum, for a few years now. Once unable to go upstairs, Susan's life has been changed. Just ask her yourself. Actually given me my life and my mobility back. Uh, I have a lot more balance. Again, I don't have any pain. I can walk up and down stairs, uh, move really quite well. Romeo doesn't just make his clients physically healthier. He helps brighten their day with his attitude. He's so motivational. He's always up. He uses a variety of exercises. He pushes you to do the best that you can be. By me having a bad attitude would affect three or four or five people or my whole staff. So I have to come in with a positive attitude, you know, and, and be that leader, you know, that is always positive among them. Romeo is an excellent trainer. He inspires others and changes their lives. He's also a man of faith. First for me, as a man of faith, a man of, you know, a believer of Jesus Christ, that has always been my, my drive. I want to live a lifestyle that demands an explanation. It's safe to say Romeo Jumesi loves what he does. Leadership matter because people matter. And our greatest calling in life is to love God and love people. Reporting for Cedar Valley Today, 
I'm Tyler Metcalf. It's clear to see what Jumesi does for the people around him. Pretty cool story. And now we go to Tyler with a look at our local weather. Tyler? Well, Tyler, it looks like Mother Nature is going to throw one more bout of winter at us, hopefully for the final time this year, before we finally get to enjoy our spring. As we look towards this weekend, Friday is going to be another cold one. It's going to be about 26 in between there and 16 degrees throughout most of today. Tomorrow, pretty much the same. 30 degrees is the high, 16 the low. And then going into Sunday and Monday, it looks like we could potentially have another round of snow headed our way. Snow showers expected on Sunday night with a high of 35, a low, or excuse me, a high of 33, a low of 25. And then on Monday, those showers will continue into the early morning hours. High is the 31 and the low is 14. So another cold weekend kind of headed our way, it looks like. And we should be expecting some snow come the beginning of next week. President Trump took to Twitter Thursday with a prognosis on health care saying it will be beautiful, but many Republicans on Capitol Hill say the picture is anything but beautiful. CNN's Jeff Zelaney has the story. President Trump made another Until forceful we, uh, sales pitch on health care, but again today he did it behind closed doors. The White House says he's all in. But for a president who swept into office with big rallies and soaring crowds, He's yet to roll out the bully pulpit on the biggest legislative push of his presidency. He limited his public comments to this tweet. Despite what you hear in the press, health care is coming along great. We are talking to many groups and it will end in a beautiful picture. That's a charitable assessment, considering conservative criticism is raging over the Republican plan to overhaul the American health care system. Good morning, everybody. Speaker Paul Ryan rolled up his sleeves, literally, to explain the bill that has sparked a feud inside the GOP. This is the closest we will ever get to repealing and replacing Obamacare. The time is here, the time is now, this is the moment, and this is the closest this will ever happen. Several prominent Republicans believe the president and GOP leaders are pushing too fast. Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas is among those sounding the alarm. House health care bill can't pass Senate without major changes, he wrote on Twitter. To my friends in the House, pause, start over, get it right, don't get it fast. Good to see you guys. At the White House, Press Secretary Sean Spicer downplayed the concern. No matter where you are, especially on the conservative side, you cannot possibly believe that the current health care system is an effective program. It is a monstrosity. It is a government, um, government gone wrong. Yet two key questions loom over the debate. How much will the plan cost and how many people could lose coverage? The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office is expected to give its answer next week. Before it does, the White House and some supporters of the plan are trying to discredit the accuracy of the Budget Office. If you're looking at the CBO for accuracy, you're looking in the wrong place. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said today lawmakers need to see the estimate of how the bill will affect the federal deficit. The president is set to hit the road next week to sell the plan with the rally in Nashville organized by Trump's campaign, not the White House. Until then, the president is holding private listening sessions in the West Wing. Congressman Mark Meadows of North Carolina and Jim Jordan of Ohio, two of the bill's biggest critics, were on hand. A year after they campaigned for the president. Well, good evening, deplorables. They are lining up against the top item on his agenda. Our goal is real simple, to bring down the cost of insurance for working families and middle class families across this country. In an effort to do that, we think you have to get rid of Obamacare completely. Dirt. During a crucial week in the battle to replace Obamacare, the Trump administration is also facing more questions about the president's so far unproven claims that he was wiretapped by former President Obama. CNN Scott McLean reports from Washington. President Trump has not offered evidence to back up his bold wiretapping claim. He's also not getting much backup from his vice president, who seemed to duck the question during a local news interview. Yes or no? Do you believe that President Obama did that? Well, what, what I can say is that uh, the president and our administration are very confident that the congressional committees in the House and Senate that are examining issues surrounding the last election, the run-up to the last election, will do that in a thorough and equitable way. The allegation stems from a series of presidential tweets Saturday morning, accusing former President Obama of wiretapping Trump Tower before the election, 
The White House press secretary says there's no reason to think the president is the target of an investigation that would warrant surveillance. He's asking Congress to get to the bottom of this. Let the Senate do their job and the House, excuse me, intelligence committees, and then report back to the American people. At least two so senators are also looking for answers. And we sent a letter to the Department of Justice and the FBI asking them for any information that they may have used to obtain a warrant. All I can say is the country is, uh, needs an answer to this. Meanwhile, the leading Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee says Trump will be, quote, exposed if an investigation reveals his claims have no merit. I think what Sean Spicer and the president wanted was to take this spurious claim and try to bury it in a closed hearing in the Intelligence Committee. We're not going to allow that to happen. In Washington, I'm Scott McLean. After the break, we've got some sports action coming for you, and we'll take a look at men's basketball preparation. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Calls me googly eyes. You know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. <laughs> Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. The <laughs> whole family's wearing glasses. I wear glasses, and I'm proud. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Next. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there. What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs? Just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs. And it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill. Donate stuff, create jobs. Warburg's men's basketball is preparing for something that they haven't done for 30 years. The team left on Wednesday heading...